and uh, keep their hands showing and most likely uh, going to ask them to uh, get on the ground at this after they get out of the vehicle. And this is something, of course, that authorities train for all the time. Uh, but at this point, they cannot be clear about the number of people inside of that vehicle. Uh, people can have an idea of what's occurring. But this is the point when they have to clear the area, clear the vehicle. Usually at this point, we know that the side streets are shut down so that new vehicles cannot get into the area. And we'll watch as you do as they go through these steps. Uh, were you able to see more than one person in the vehicle that was leading Chase? Well, I, I haven't had a chance to uh, look in. And maybe we could uh, zoom in and, and uh, try to get a, a shot a little closer. We see the airbags inside the vehicle have deployed as a result of the impact with that other automobile. But at this point, uh, I can't see uh, anybody else besides the driver in this vehicle. It's not often that you see a vehicle of this sort actually leading authorities on a chase. And we want to clarify, Jeff, that in fact, this is the LAPD. It's not the Burbank Police Department. We know that the original call came in in the Foothill Division. And so it was the LAPD that gave chase. And we're watching along there. It looks like there are at least a half a dozen black and whites there on Alameda. It's now just about the 5 o'clock hour. So this is the time of day normally when people would be going home from work. However, it's a holiday which would seem to be a plus in this situation because fewer people are on the streets, fewer pedestrians are on the sidewalks. I'm joined right now by Carlos Amesqua, and we're watching this unfolding live here. Well, the concern, Fox. of course, is we don't know what's in the back of that van. Correct. How many people, what's in there, are there weapons? Uh, was this van an undercover uh, operation of some sort by a criminal? Or is this just some guy randomly stealing a van and taking it on a joyride? And so the officers have to be very careful as to how they approach the vehicle and what happens next. Now, they've got one guy out. He's got his hands up, and he is uh, listening to commands that the officers are giving through the speakers. I assume they generally do it that way because right. they want to make sure they hear. But they've got one guy out. If there's more people in there, they'll find out soon. But he's making his way to the center divider, and they'll have him get down on his knees and then eventually uh, flat on his face, and then they'll take him into custody, but uh, we'll see this as it unfolds right here live. We don't know much about the initial call. Um, we, we know, of course, that it came out of the Foothill Division, but uh, this person who apparently was driving the vehicle seems to be following the commands of authorities right there. And um, this takes time. They, they have to follow protocol, and this is all done in the safety of not only the public at large, but the officers and even the suspect. Well, the crazy thing is this was, you know, was not a high-speed chase. It was kind of a slow-speed chase. He blew through a couple of stop signs and a couple of lights. But, uh, you know, Jeff, it seemed like he was not trying to really get away from people. And, and after the spike strip hit, uh, he obviously had no control of this vehicle. He did hit another vehicle, as we saw. But now they've got to concentrate on the van. They've got him on the ground. What's inside the van, the big mystery? There may be nothing. In the back of the van, we don't know. This will take time as, as they secure this area. Now you see them now approaching the van very carefully to see what's inside. They'll open the uh, back door and look in. And we'll get the all clear here in a second. It's more difficult, of course, uh, when you don't have access to look through windows. Yeah. And so because this is the back cab of that van, uh, extra precaution will be used. Is the all clear? Uh, yes. And this is all by protocol. Um, if we could learn more about that initial call, it would certainly help us of what, what actually occurred in the Foothill Division. But Jeff, are, are you able to, to let us know, are people being held back from this area to the best of your knowledge? Are, have streets been uh, cordoned off or is traffic being allowed in at all? Well, uh, there is no traffic uh, allowed on the street that he's on right now. Uh, they well, let's have, keep the uh, camera the back at, Let's keep off. the camera back over where the uh, suspect is, thanks. Are they still on Alameda? Uh, no, he made a right-hand turn on Alameda, and I, I'm not exactly sure what street this is at this point. Well, now they're going to cuff this guy and take him away. It uh, looks like the, the van is clear. It uh, doesn't look like anything other than what looks like solar equipment. That looks, that's, is that what that says, that side of that van? I can't read it because we've got our box. American over it, Solar is what yeah. we had as the vehicle. It's un once in a while we see unusual vehicles uh, giving chase. Rental vans. Yeah, it's, it, lately it seems like we've had some unusual ones, but um, it appears that there was just one person in that vehicle. As if enough isn't going on today on a, on a Martin Luther King Jr. Right. holiday. Lots of people at the beach, uh, the inauguration, and then 
always some knucklehead takes a, van, a car or something. And can happen any day of the week, even on a week. holiday. <laughs> even on a holiday. All right, Jeff, thanks very much for that. Looks like this is uh, pretty much a wrap. They've got it uh, figured out. The, the van is empty of any other suspects. They've got this suspect in custody. And, and that is Burbank. And we'll come back with Studio 11 LA in just a